I don't see why you can't be successful. But you've put so many limits and labels on your life and you don't deserve that. Yes, you are powerful. Yes, you are unique. Yes, you are not supposed to look like everybody else and have a life like everybody else. Yes, you are supposed to work hard. Yes, you are beautiful. Yes, you are smart. Yes, you have to talk to yourself and not criticize yourself so much. talking about the 10 tips to help you avoid being so hard on yourself because we need to start adding these 10 things in so that we start being good to ourselves and chasing our higher self let's get into it number one is one thing that we can all work on and that is going to be self-compassion we can be more graceful to ourselves to know that some days are just not our days and we just need to be more compassionate and understanding to ourselves, not be so hard on ourselves. Take the time to analyze your situation, analyze your emotions and your mental state day to day. Every time you wake up, you're not always going to wake up as you. You're going to wake up sometimes flustered, sometimes very happy, and it's not always going to be a perfect day. You cannot always expect to have a perfect day, but you can be compassionate and understanding. Sometimes you're feeling off. Don't let that go for many days. Don't be lazy or unmotivated for too many days and let that linger. However, you can be a lot kinder and understand, okay, if not today and I take my rest, let's plan today what we can be better at tomorrow and just make a lighter note of the little steps that you can do. If it was to lose weight tomorrow, we're just sticking to drinking water and maybe eating one nutritious meal, baby steps. You had an argument with your boss, maybe you can just like not let those emotions get to you and instead join a workout class or go for yoga or do something that just eases your mind so you can deal with it tomorrow and then you can approach the situation by really truly expressing your emotions in a calming manner that's like hey boss I really didn't like how the conversation left me feeling can we process it this way and have a better conversation because sometimes the projection that you get from people that can be negative onto you that may make you flustered or upset is not about you sometimes they just don't know any better i've been there on the other side and i've been there both sides if you haven't already liked this video definitely like this video subscribe to the channel drop your thoughts in the comments i want to see you in the comments i want to see your energy in the comments number two is going to be challenge your negative thoughts when you are being critical to yourself really pull yourself in and be like no i'm meant for greatness you do have to talk to yourself with affirmations yes you are powerful yes you are unique yes you are not supposed to look like everybody else and have a life like everybody else yes you are supposed to work hard yes you are beautiful yes you are smart yes you have to talk to yourself and not criticize yourself so much especially if you wake up in the morning you're like oh i'm fat or i'm this how about let's change the way that we look at ourselves and just start saying i'm a work in progress and i'm proud of who i am and what i've gotten to and i'm aware of who i can possibly become and change the way that we see ourselves like that the three is going to be set realistic goals i remember so many times my coaches were telling me to not aim for perfection, but for progress. Every step counts. Every set of effort counts. Action counts. The first step matters. It's about taking a step, not thinking about the end results, because oftentimes you guys are thinking about, oh, becoming a successful YouTuber. You haven't even started. You haven't even talked to yourself to even make a script or what you even want to talk about on your platform and you're thinking about the fear of becoming of what you could become on YouTube. I'm telling you right now that set realistic expectations and check them off daily. If you are looking to lose weight, start with baby goals. Maybe it's work out one to two times a week, drink water, focus on your daily habits of your water, your nutrition. If you haven't already watched my videos on the 10 bad habits that you need to get rid of and the 10 good habits that you need to incorporate, definitely check those bad boys out because it was going to change your life. Number four is going to be focus on your strengths start 
focusing on your strengths. As you start to strengthen yourself, you will see that the weaker parts about you are gonna to start to strengthen as well. I knew that public speaking was not for me. Looking from this camera, I was, it was not for me in the beginning. However, as I continuously did it and became more confident with it, knowing that I have a purpose and so do you, it just started feeling natural. Like I'm just talking to my friends, right? Let's just do that by focusing on our strengths. Let's start becoming our higher self by, by talking to ourselves with more intention that we can become great. You are strong, you are resilient, you have grit, you have purpose. Honestly, you have everything inside of you. God already planted the seed. You need to start adding the water. Number five is going to be build supportive relationships. <laughs> the amount of people that are not in my life today and we didn't even have a goodbye, I just started evolving and the leaves just started falling off naturally. You don't need everybody on this train with you. You also don't need to be upset with people or have bad relationships with people because you're in a season of transition. Some leaves just fall off like that. Just look at the plants and the leaves on the trees. They just fall off and they didn't tell you that they were going to fall off. They just fell off and you looked outside the window. Listen, if relationships don't align with you, whether they're romantic or friendships or business, don't force them because God had a reason for them to teach you lessons, to help you, to add to you and some drain you, some make you feel terrible realize that not everybody is your cup of tea and not meant to be around you while you're growing some people just gotta watch you from the distance love you from the distance hate you from the distance or some people just hate you while they're beside you pay attention to that don't beg for friends don't beg for relationships don't beg for somebody to treat you know how to treat yourself because most of the time I remember my friend yesterday, we went out for lunch and she asked, oh, how come you don't do girls trips or how come you don't like hang out with so many people? I'm like, look, if I'm not with my man, I will have a few girlfriends around me and a lot of my friends are worldwide. They're not in my city, but I'm not trying to sit at the table or have anybody sit at my table that doesn't align with me because I'm not going to sit there and have you drain me when I was looking to have a really good time because some people just come with so much baggage that they're just so negative man they just kill the vibe and i'm like i'm not looking for my vibe to be killed today i woke up and if i wasn't feeling great i'm trying to sit around people that are just gonna make me feel better period that's why you're watching this video because i make you feel good if i'm in person with you i want you to feel good so i have the same the same type of expectation when i am out with people you need to add to me I don't need you to tell me that I'm beautiful or this or that. I just need you to have some let's get it energy. I'm on positive vibes 24-6. <laughs> Number six is going to be practice mindfulness. And that is just centering your mind, centering your soul, being present in who you are and where you are right now. Like I said in my videos before, you need to be very self-aware of who you are and who you're becoming, but be at peace with where you are. I know we're not always in the best place. Like some of you guys are in seasons of disaster and I'm telling you, it's a moment. It's a moment right now that you're going to look back on and say, okay, maybe I needed that to happen or in order for me to become this person, but be present in this moment because in a blink of an eye, you can get out of that situation and be so at peace and be like, whoa, I didn't know that that could have been possible if I changed the way my mind was or how I looked at the situation. I remember so many times that I was so angry that I held on to so much anger and baggage because I didn't want to let a certain situation go and that just hindered the progress. But once you just be present in the moment, you digest it, you analyze it, is it necessary for me to be all worked up about? Mm, not all the time because it's five years or one year from now, it's not even going to matter. So just be present. Try and look at what you can learn from certain situations. Number seven is going to be take breaks. Those are so necessary when it comes to just you 
recharging. You need to recharge. After a stressful week, after a stressful day, that's why I always say you need to have routine and structure. You need to have a morning routine where you're doing things for you or at least one thing for you. You need to have a night routine where you're relaxing and calming down into the night before you sleep. It's so important to know when you need to take that rest. Even from the gym, I do not train six to seven days a week. I train about four to five times a week. And if I know that I'm exhausted mentally and physically, I don't force my body to just go to the gym. I will just focus on my food and my water that day, but just relaxing myself, being patient, touching my skin, lotioning my skin, just pampering myself a little bit more. You are in this one body for a time. You are in this one body for just a limited time. Can you imagine just up and out, up and out, up and out, flustered all the time, and that was your life? Like, you don't deserve that. You deserve peace. You deserve to be so self-aware when you know something doesn't align or when you need a break because you deserve a break, not a Kit Kat. <laughs> Number eight is going to be learn from your mistakes. And the beautiful thing about life is we do need trial and error, unfortunately. No matter if we don't like it in the moment, God put in our path for a reason because it was just meant to shape us into who we're meant to become. Once you learn from those mistakes, you often learn that that is something that your higher self never or doesn't want to align with and you won't be forced to make it again. You'll know better. And I remember so many times my mom would warn me about this and warn me about that. And I was a rebellious child that was like, I'm gonna figure out the consequences on my own. I needed to actually figure those consequences out on my own for me to become this person. Not saying go out there and splurge on the obstacles and challenges. Just be more mindful that your mistakes are bound to happen. We are not supposed to be perfect human beings, but the way that you shape your mindset to look at your obstacles, your challenges, and your mistakes, they're going to help your life or hinder your life. Number nine is going to be celebrate your progress. It is so important for you to be so compassionate with your growth. You got to be your biggest cheerleader because nobody can cheer for you the way that you can cheer for yourself. Like I mentioned before, you've got one life in this lifetime. And I for so long had other people, the expectation that other people had to cheer for me. Honey, you're going to flip that around today because we're going to start cheering for ourselves. We are going to start celebrating the small wins, the big wins, the wins that didn't even happen because sometimes that redirection is for purpose driven results. Listen, Sometimes things didn't work out in your favor because God had something bigger and better for you. That door had to close for you to be here right now, to for you to have a better opportunity, to be surrounded by better things and people. I remember jobs didn't work out for me because maybe the people that were in that type of business weren't my people and weren't going to treat me well. But God opened the door for other things to happen for me to enjoy life and to be around good people. Celebrate your wins, the small ones that you try hard for, the big ones that you achieve. Take yourself out sometimes by yourself to celebrate those little things, like a little cupcake and eat it, baby, savor all the taste and the flavors. You don't need to have a bunch of people with you to celebrate you. You need to have you with yourself to celebrate you. Everybody else and everything else that celebrates you is an addition to you. Just celebrate those small things. Once you start celebrating yourself more for just trying your best, for drinking one glass of water, for taking your vitamins, for talking to yourself better, you will see a world of a difference. Get used to just putting it in your mind like, wow, I tried today. I did this. I smiled today. I made somebody feel good today. I may not be feeling good, but I made somebody feel good today. You did a lot of things that there are small things that you do throughout the day that are so life-changing and they impact a lot of people. You got to celebrate whether it's your own goals or you did something for somebody else. Number 10 is going to be seek professional help if needed, because we can't do life by ourselves, whether we have a partner, family, friends, 
I have coaches, like I mentioned, that are there for me for things that I don't want to deal with or things that I know I need help with to become greater. And there is no shame in having a therapist. There's no shame in having a personal trainer, a nutritionist, a life coach. There's no shame in choosing leaders that are going to help you become your best self because your friends can't always be that person for you. My loud ass husband just came home. Mm. Go downstairs. We all need professionals in our life to help us become great. There is no shame in asking for help and seeking advice beyond your friends, your family, because that's really close to you. You need a professional to actually help you become great. Sometimes I honestly make sure that my YouTube platform provides that knowledge and information, understanding of how you can reinvent yourself. But just in case it's not enough, don't feel bad or shame of reaching out. You can always send me a message below or you can follow me on my social medias, Shanice Case or just reach out to another professional. It doesn't have to be in the life coach, fitness coach, nutrition coach area. It could be a counselor or a therapist. There's no shame in that. We all need somebody higher than us that sees greatness in us sometimes to install that into our stubborn minds. So I hope this video enlightened you on how you can be a little bit more graceful to yourself and stop being so hard on yourself. If you found this video very helpful, don't forget to hit that like button, that subscribe button, and the post notification button for when I drop the next video. I often drop videos on Tuesdays and Thursdays, so you can always look out for me then. But if you have any questions or any suggestions, drop them in the chat because I'd love to see you there. And yes, guys, Blessing you guys for the rest of the weekend. I will see you next week.